Hey guys, welcome to the third match between Striker and Jeyun. Upper end corner, we have Striker starting as the Blue Zerg. Bottom left hand corner, we have Jeyun starting as the Pink Protoss. Jeyun is currently up in the series 2-0 and could be the final game. It is best of five. This is on Eclipse, and thus far, Jeyun really controlling things. Before I get too far into it, I do want to say happy birthday to Moltrap. When I am casting this, it is sometime in October, and Moltrap's birthday is sometime in October. And uh, actually, my, I have a sister who whose birthday is recent as well, although I doubt Moltrap has higher odds of seeing this than her. Actually, come to think of it, pretty much... Yeah, a lot of people that are born, that I know were born in October are absolutely incredible people. Absolutely amazing people. So, I will say, wish the world... They're, yeah, they're just really cool people, actually, now that I come to think about it. Incredible. I don't know, maybe it's a Zodiac thing. But I wish you all the world, for what it's worth. Um... Yeah, what is it, Scorpio season in October? Might be off. You know, this is like a complete tangent, although it's StarCraft, so I guess I'm uh, slightly related, but I find it kind of interesting where you have the Chinese Zodiac that's based on year, where you have like the Roman Zodiac, and I think a couple others that are based on more the lunar calendar, I assume. I'm wondering if that has to do with being like a nomadic base culture versus like an agrarian, and then Egypt's like somewhere weird in between. Also kind of odd how like just wrote the stars end up being part of some spiritual mystic thing influencing religious thought and whatnot. It's just like people stare up the stars and... Anyway, side thoughts. Side thoughts! Uh, although I, you know, might have something to do with insanity. Lunatic, actually, a word lunatic and lunacy. The luna in the word actually referencing moon, so... Could be that a giant body out in the sky that's pulling the tides is also pulling brain matter somehow one direction or another and causing problems. I think that is a documented effect. Anyway, we are seeing... I believe this was an overpool opener for Striker. Let me get into the game itself. Any Protoss Gateway. I'm always fascinated by stuff like that. I'm a sucker for it. Uh, Probe actually doing a good job of bullying off that natural expansion. Only a pair of Zerglings being produced thus far. This drone... Oh, might get taken out. It's getting pulled out to the corner. Losing early drones, even scouting drones like this, can be devastating. So the drone going to go ahead and try to flee. That natural expansion has managed to plop down, but that was a good amount of delay from Jayun. Jayun, in the meantime, has a single zealot marching across. Needs to be a little bit wary because there are more Rs, there are more zerglings in production. The probe has done a good job of remaining on site, particularly checking that gas timing. This gas is very late for Striker. I think Striker very flustered, potentially very uh, flustered. And Striker, actually, look at this. This just shows you Jayun's heads up versus Zerg play. He knew that there was going to be a movement towards that third. Oh, he misses it, though. The Zealot could have disrupted an expansion there, but is pulled right back out. Might want to get back to the main because Zerglings are making a beeline here. So this Zealot needs to get on top of the ramp in a hurry. This is a, a forge down. I don't think this is enough to blockade. Wow, Zealot popping out just in the nick of time. One Zergling dies out on the front, which might open up this Zealot to go ahead and press towards the main. Perhaps Jayun feeling like he was a little bit too late to stop that uh, hatchery and didn't want to get the bonus damage. But Striker's economy once again didn't, getting disruption. That's going to force out more Zerglings. The drone's trying to fend this off alone, and the Zergling's coming all the way back from home base. And you can just see Jayun's just timing back and forth is forcing just an immense amount of economic disruption on the Striker's side. And it just shows you how skilled he is in this matchup versus Zerg. And this isn't to say that Striker's a slouch. It's just Jayun knows this matchup pure. <clears throat> so Zergling's going to go ahead and chase down that Zealot behind the Extractor. This, this Extractor, I didn't get the exact timing of it, but it's come out extremely late. Striker, low on the drone count, doesn't have that natural expansion very well saturated. Jayun, however, has been a little bit delayed because he went for a larger Zealot count, but has managed to keep that probe count up and running. His assimilator warping online. Another probe making its way out, I think, to confirm that 12, uh, that 12 o'clock base. So Striker moving towards more three-hatch play overall. And it looks like he is going to go for potentially a 973 after all of that mess. Which means he needs to stop these Zealots from marching around, which, yeah, may, well, let's see how these Zealots, they're holding out in the middle. Jane doing a good job of actually potentially just trying to keep them in the dark, dodge it around this... Striker focusing on getting this probe down, but the Zealots actually might be able to get to the 12 o'clock, and if the Zerglings don't get there in sufficient time, this is going to force a lot of Zerglings out from Striker. 
if they don't get there in sufficient time, that is going to potentially take out that hatchery. So the Zergling able to chase that probe all the way back. This zealot has gone across, but I think these zealots have managed to push through the shadows. So this is going to be the first that's seen of it. And two zealots holding the ramp, a single zealot in. That's not enough. Well, let's see. If, yeah, that drone actually dying on its way out. So clever play to also negate Zerglings coming to the support. And so even though this is a 973, a lot of drone disruption still uh, from all of Jayun's antics on the front. The Zerglings trying to spread out and not engage. And these Zealots going to go ahead and pocket to that top wall, try to use the minerals to get better concavity. But honestly, I don't know that they need it because the Zergling count so small. These Zealots being pushed off. Striker has the problem of one, wanting to repel these Zealots to the north, but two, wanting to keep Jayun away to not reveal the fact that he's gone for the Hydroloscope opener. So having a great deal of disruption. In the meantime, the, looks like we do have that Stargate building up. So that Corsair timing with all of the economic disruption might be critical as far as when the Hydralisks are being produced. But Jayun getting a lot of disruption on Striker thus far. As we've seen in match one and match two, the Zerglings finally chewing through those zelts to the north. Hydralisks are now being produced. Striker, I guess, pulling the, the trigger now. And let's see if he ends up with... So going for the range, let's see if he has sufficient economy to work with it. He's sitting at 18 overall, which is, uh, well, let me, he, he's still mining gas, so that's less than usual. Jayun at two base saturation. He's already got two cannons up, and that honestly might be sufficient just because it's going to be fewer Hydralisks than usual. Keep in mind, plus one weapons being canceled, range not quite there, so they're not quite able to poke over that wall. Third and fourth cannon being placed. There's also going to be, keep in mind, a larger number of Zerglings. Corsair making its way out. This Zealot has still managed to survive along that right-hand edge. The gateway certainly going to collapse. There's no saturation of that 12 o'clock base because of all that harassment. The Zerglings starting to press forward. They do not have leg speed, but they might create a bit of a buffer. And yeah, there's just not a lot of Hydralisks. And on top of that, some of these Hydra might need to draw back to help deal with that Corsair and that Zealot. So currently, the Hydralisks engaging that Zealot going for a split attack. This Hydralisk just have a, a sliver of health. Nice job preserving that from Striker's point. Uh, this Corsair going to cut off some reinforcements. One Overlord down, and that's just more economic damage that Striker just cannot hold. More Hydralisks moving up, and Striker has to commit with this. Has to commit with this. Still hasn't dealt with that Corsair. I think the Corsair is going to love what it sees at the 12 o'clock, which is a completely abandoned base, which means Striker's absolutely all in at this stage. So that should provoke more, provoke more cannons. It looks like another pylon being dropped. One cannon being picked off there. Do we have another? So Zelt leg speed being upgraded. Additional gateways being plopped down. The double Was that a double citadel of a dune? Double citadel of a dune. So a bit of a mistake on Jayun's part. The forge not going to be able to complete armor. So there's not going to be any plus one weapons or plus one armor here. And Jayun needs to actually cancel that upgrade. But does have the cannon wall. Has a very, very strong economy. And with the gateways behind this, should be able to turn this around into a decent flood. Striker might have some room if he, in this gap, this is kind of the power of this attack, in this gap, I, I guess he has a lot of Hydralisks. Maybe if he just throws a bunch of rounds of drones out there to try to compete with this and then continues to pile the Hydralisks up or maybe gets, I mean, he's nowhere near even layer tech. So no, he's got to do it with just the Hydralisks alone. So he's got to punch through all of these cannons. He has the Hydralisks upgrade. He's continuing to push this through. There's going to be more units coming out for Jayun, although it's mostly going to be Zealots. They do have Zealot leg speed. Maybe that's why he dropped the double Citadel of a Dune, because he was doubly wanting to get that Zealot leg speed up online, because if he can survive this attack, he will be in a pretty solid position going into the late game. The Corsair waiting nearby to potentially draw some damage. And actually, look at this. Even taking down the eggs on the corner to open up greater surface area, knowing that this is going to be, it's kind of the OK Corral coming up here in a moment. There, a second forge being dropped behind this. Templar Archives also working in additional gateways being plopped down. I think Jane knowing that it is a all-in, shell-in situation. Overlord starting to peek forward, see what it's up against. I'm wondering if any uh, Dragoons to provide some additional range will be part of this. Jane currently with the supply lead, but keep in mind that's a 40 of that, well, 39 of that is in probes roughly. So this is a pretty sizable army here for Striker. He's only sitting on that 18 drone count for comparison to give you an idea of the supply versus supply situation. So those cannons are going to be huge. The Corsairs still looking at that northern location to see, yeah, I think confirming that there's no saturation there. And actually I want to, before he pulls the trigger, you can just see the edge and see that there's no mining happening. The Zealots gathering up. Probes have actually been holding off the line here just in case there is a commitment. 
to have a little bit of additional padding of troops just to commit. Psy Storm being upgraded, Jay or knows, well, Striker has to pull the trigger before Psy Storm becomes a factor. So continuing to pile those units up, the Corsair now, yeah, confirming saturation. Again, just absolutely confirming what he, I think he already knows. And now it's a waiting game. When does Striker decide to push, pull the trigger? High Templar now being built, now pulling the trigger. Zealots getting up on top of the Hydra line. Probes also pulling briefly, now drawing back. The Zealots regrouping, trying to get and distract those Hydralisks as they're gauging that cannon. I think Jayun actually did the perfect engagement there. There's still more Hydralisks moving forward, but there's still some Zealots and plenty of cannons left behind this. So the attack has failed. Striker being pushed back and calls GG right there. Great play overall from Jayun, just causing havoc in the early game to take the series and this is going to striker is going to have to sit and puzzle between as he goes to the losers bracket to engage whip it is possible that we'll see whip back in the finals but if this is an indicator of the grand finals to come first of all exciting matches but secondarily striker's gotta figure out something so anyway hope you guys enjoyed it thanks for listening